Hello everybody. In this tutorial, we will see what are the jar and what are the benefits of the jar and how to create a jar. There are two different ways that you can do it. One is in the command prompt and the other is the Eclipse IDE. Uh, now in this tutorial, we will see how to create it from the command prompt and in the next tutorial, we will see how to create it from Eclipse. You can see which is the easiest one and you can follow it after. Okay, and then so what is a jar? A jar is nothing but a Java archive file. What it does is it bundles all the resources that are associated to your project and the dot class files. So it bundles all to all of them together and then it packages. Uh, so that particular archive file is called jar. That is Java archive file. Mainly the benefits of it would be like if you want to decrease the download time you can just upload the jar instead of independent files the security the compression the portability if you want to have package versioning uh sealing these are different benefits that you have with the jar file so to start on with uh, we'll have to go to the command prompt okay now we are back to the desktop uh, so now to run the command from go to your start search for CMD my machine is Windows 7 if you have any other uh, OS that you are using you need to go to command prompt you can just type CMD in the search and then it will list for you say CMD so before we start on with uh, what do we want we need a project which have a Java file and dot class files that we have so that because Java archive file is nothing but it bundles everything together. So the prerequisite for that is your project should be ready. And to run it from the command prompt, to create it from the command prompt, your um, Java path, home path has to be set, has to be set to the environmental variables. Like install JDK, install JRE. To verify that environmental paths, a quick set, quick check, go to your start, my computer, right click properties advanced system settings environmental variables and then here in the system variable search for path click edit and you will see that I did set the path to C program files Java JDK version that I have bin so you need to set the path to bin so this is the prerequisite that you need to check uh, before uh, you create any jars or you compile your Java classes so what I'll do is to save some time, I've already created a project that is hello world. So I'll just use the .java file and the .class file. Uh, for that you go, I just uh, created a new folder which has uh, a pix folder but I won't be using that now. Okay now to save some time, I've already created a .java file and just copy it to view it. It's just a class which has a main method which prints hello. I would just update this to hello world jar created successfully I'm not going to be not going to use any complex code because this tutorial is mainly how to create a jar you can use the project that you are ready with to create a jar and then um, as we discussed uh, what the jar will have will have the dot class file so we need to compile this dot java file to do that copy the path where the dot java file is because we need to tell um, the JVM that where it has to compile the Java file from. To do that CD, that is change directory, quotes, right click, paste, control V won't work. Enter. The path, the, de the destination has been changed, the directory has been changed. To compile it, I would use the keyword Java C will compile. Which file I need to compile? Say hello.java file. So it compiled and then it will create a dot class file. Okay, after it creates a dot class file, we'll bundle this dot class file into um, the jar file. Now, what we need to do before we start on with creating a jar file, we need a manifest file. This manifest file will contain what is the main class, what is the application entry point. So we need to set up the application entry point in the manifest file. So that when the jar, when we execute the jar, that is when we run the jar, uh, the JVM will know that what is the startup application entry point. It reads from the manifest file and then it will run the jar file. To do that, in the same folder, remember in the same directory, you need to create a manifest. Right click, new, it's a text file. 
okay manifest dot text open it you need to write here what is the entry point for that you use the keyword name class colon what is the main class say hello okay and then you need to have two enters because uh, it has to it, it has to run it if you say if that's the get point it doesn't execute the java file and then close it okay now we are ready with the manifest okay uh, this jar there are few keywords that it also creates a manifest file but what it does is it creates a blank manifest file with the just java version but we need to give it the entry point as well so for that um, we need to provide the manifest file okay to see what are all the keywords that we have in the jar uh, you can say jar okay let me just maximize so here you see c creates tx these are all the options that we have in here so to create an archive file what we do is we say jar cfvm c is to create a new archive file f is to specify the archive file name and v is to generates verbose output on standard output and m is do not create a manifest file for the entries because we are specifying the manifest file and then what do you say is we say the file name that you wanted to create you say say hello dot jar the name is of your own of your choice because it's not as per the main uh, entry point class but to make it convenient for this tutorial i'm just using the same one okay and then what is the manifest file manifest.txt and then you need to provide all the resources that are associated you do that by using this space so i did have one space i would say say hello dot class you won't use the dot java file you will use the compiled file that is the dot class file only for the jar file and then space i just have created a dummy pix folder which just has an image it's nothing to do with my project but i just wanted to show how to add folders as well this folder pix has a image so i don't have to manually say that the uh, jar package is img underscore zero three eight four as well i can just say over here space pix so what it will add it will add the folder as well and then enter when you click enter you see that added manifest adding say hello dot class output adding pix folder and then it adds this jpg in this so the jar has been created successfully you can see the jar right in here okay to see the it says is added now you want to see what are the contents in the jar there is also some keywords that you can use to see the contents that is jar tf what is the jar file name that we have given uh, say hello dot jar see it created a meta inf folder in which it created a manifest.mf file it, it did not create a manifest.mf file it used our manifest file over here and then as i say hello dot class it moved images okay now to run it what is our keyword to run java jar say hello dot jar now what we need to expect the sys out that we have updated hello world jar created successfully okay uh, these are the different options that you see you can also even update the jar because whenever you create a jar it creates a time for it so don't extract it because i know it's an archive file you can extract and zip it as well but do not do it because it's a very wrong procedure you can update it to update let's just create an another dummy folder okay txt okay and the txt has some bunch of txt file one okay let me just rename to and then three so this txt has a bunch of files now i have to update the say hello dot jar with this txt folder what i would say is jar u is the key word that you use uf jar file name is say hello dot jar update this jar file with what are the files txt as i said you don't have to mention the sub file name you just can uh, mention the root folder and then enter and then you see that 
the time has been updated. 350. To see the contents, what we do is jar tf has say hello.jar. It says txt123. I did not enter, you might have seen it was scrolling. You just use the upper uh, up arrow keyword so that it will show you all the previous commands that you have used. If you are executing the same thing. See, now if I want to run it, you go up arrow, you used to go up the commands and down arrow to down the commands that you see. Now I am running the jar file. It says hello world jar created successfully. Okay, so this is how you create, update, view the contents. You can even extract the jar. Let's just create a new folder, new folder, and now let me just copy it. Uh, move this over here, and then rename it. Now I need to change the path, right? Go here because if I extract in the same place, the files would be over it. So I'm just creating a new path, paste. So this is my new part. Now to extract, I would say jar xf, okay, and say hello dot jar. See, it extracted all the uh, files that are in the jar for me. So in this tutorial, uh, we have seen all the possible ways to do from the command prompt. In the next one, we'll see how to do it in Eclipse. When you see it in Eclipse, you'll think that it's pretty much easy to do in Eclipse. Why to go through all this one? Okay. I hope this tutorial is helpful. Thank you.